You'll visit SpaceX Starbase in Texas for a rocket launch. I remember 10 years ago waiting for the competition to catch up and everybody was, oh, two months the competition is going to catch up. I was like, well, let's give them a few years. But <clears throat> it's been a decade and nobody's even attempted it yet. That just shows how complex rocket science is, specifically such advanced rocket science. With this one, the feat for a rocket so humongous, so big, so heavy, it basically, it's impossible to build feet that can carry so much weight that can fold up and down. And it was going to be a real big problem. So what they said is, hey, let's build these chopsticks into towers and then have these chopsticks plop the rocket out midair. And that's literally what happened. Unfortunately, on this launch, this is actually what's remarkable about this launch is that it's already a reuse, even though this is a very early testing phase of the Starship rocket, this is already a reuse of the booster. So this is the second time this booster has success successfully launched. And one of the engines inside is actually its third use. And, uh, but this time, because it was a reuse, they wanted to, and because they advanced so quickly, by the time they get approval to launch this, internally, they already have five or 10 versions ahead, right? So they're already five or 10 versions ahead. And they really just want to want to get to the more developed, more advanced rockets to test them as well. So they decided to eliminate this one and to push it to its limit. So as the booster was returning to Earth, they really used aerodynamical movements to try and see where the limit is. Because the best way to, to figure out what something's limit is, is to really push it to the limit and see where it breaks. And that's where, where the actual limit is. So that's what they did in this case. And unfortunately, we were busy looking at the sky and we missed because everybody was looking on the side and suddenly everybody was and we're like, wait, what happened? And they all saw a huge explosion in the sky. And then it took, takes about five minutes for this sonic boom to just blast you off your pants. And yeah, it's a remarkable experience. Recommend everybody at least once go and watch these launch and in future launches and previous launches as well. You can actually watch it get caught. And when it comes back to get caught, it actually breaks the sound barrier a bunch of times. So you get to hear the sonic booms. It's like I said, it's less to watch and more to feel and experience, but it is one hell of a thing to experience. And I think there's, if you have children, there's nothing more inspiring for them than to see something like this. And what's really important about this, this rocket is twofold, making life multiplanetary, and we'll get back to that soon. But more importantly is point to point travel on earth. So because this is basically a ballistic missile that can leave and enter atmosphere reliably and safely, the top part uses this really unique belly flop maneuver where it uses the atmosphere to belly flop off it to slow down, which is completely unique as well and very fascinating. But soon, these things can travel anywhere on Earth within 45 minutes or less. Because if you look at the International Space Station, it orbits Earth every 90 minutes. So if you want to get any to any point on Earth within 45 minutes, you can get there. So within probably a few years, maybe 10, let's just say, to be safe, we will be able to fly on these. Now, because they're reusable, the price is basically the price of fuel. And we're going to get much more technical in future episodes because this is the most marvelous technology in the world. But because we're pressed for time here, we'll keep it short. It is marvelous and beautiful, and it's an experience that everybody should watch. Joe, I hope you come soon and we can go together to watch it. That would be really cool. I plan on going sometime soon again to watch another one of these launches. I think it is. it really is a must, must experience for everyone. And like we said, eventually we'll be able to do point-to-point -point trans transport on Earth, but we're going to get to all the details in future episodes. I think a very cool thing is to see the rapid progress. Like SpaceX is a company that works without breaks. They work 24-7. But also I've never seen, I saw construction that they're doing, and I've never seen so many tractors work in such a small confined area so quickly. And they're just like, it's like tra one tractor moves in and the next one, they're like the perfect timing. It's like, a, it's like watching some orchestra or something. It's just really remarkable. Even just the construction of the base. This isn't them building rockets. This is just, it's just the spirit of what they do and how they do it. And yeah, they're building up Brownsville, which is the nearby town. Elon donated like $30 million for the development of Brownsville. And right after the launch, there was actually like a space fest in downtown Brownsville. And it was really beautiful. I think we may have some photos of that, but you used to live in Brownsville. What are your thoughts on what Brownsville was like and how things have been changing? So last time I was at Boca Chica Beach before it be actually just recently became incorporated as a town, our base. But back then it was basically a kind of a beach with not really any amenities. The fancy beach it was in his South Padre Island. And Boca Chica did have a number of homes around there, which got appropriated and bought out by SpaceX. There's some houses that remained, but the Brownsville is a border town. It was always looking for some great thing to happen to bring additional technology. It always had an interest in being a tech town, but needed a means to be able to do that. It has a very important seaport over there, and it's right on the border. Literally, you can walk to Mexico from Brownsville. 
So it's it's strategically located. And for the space operations, the fact that it's right on the Gulf of America, as it is now, that when the launches occur, they can go into and over the water so that if something ever, if there's a mishap or what have you, you don't have these rockets flying right over dry land. So it's it's perfectly located. It was a win, I think, for the city to ultimately get SpaceX to go there. I don't know if they would have preferred that there not be a separate incorporated city. I'm not sure about the politics and what happened with that. But this certainly does benefit the greater Brownsville area and Cameron County that it's located in. I'm just going through some of the other pictures that you sent from that event. Certainly, it's not the way it used to be. It's It's got a whole new thing going on there. And now this is a, a hub for technology and space travel eventually to uh, who knows to where, maybe even to Mars, right? Yeah, and that's the thing. The most important cities on Earth are port cities. And once Mars becomes an actual civilization, and that is far out, but within a decade or two, hopefully, then this will be the gateway to Mars. So, yeah, I think there there could be a tremendous future for the city if this is becomes the port city for Mars, essentially. Yeah, again, great for the city of Brownsville and for the surrounding areas. And again, it's cool that you got a chance to go there and you can be able to go back again and do some more poking around, get some more pictures, and we'll share what our audience, what you find out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like I said, it's something everybody should experience. And once you go once, you really just want to go back. So I definitely plan on going back sometime and hopefully you'll join me for that. I think what's remarkable is like you were saying, it's very accessible. It's not like some big government installation. You can get fairly close to see what's going on. And I think that that's very approachable and very laid back and it gives you a different feel than maybe what you'd expect. And it's a nice place to go. You can Travel into Mexico briefly. You can go to South Padre Islands. A lot of things to see and do. I expect to get a thank you from the Brownsville Chamber of Commerce uh, <laughs> for the plug. But ultimately, yeah, I think it's and I think it's great that you're able to go there. So just a That's- shout out for a if anybody wants a phenomenal, very in depth technological investigative type of research of the development of this rocket. There's a YouTube channel called CSI Starbase. And he does phenomenal job basically analyzing every single development of this, the missile and the stage zero, which is like the launch platforms and stuff like that. There are a bunch of other, what about, what if, what about it, I think is another YouTube channel on the subject. There are a ton of them. Everyday astronaut is phenomenal. It's the most exciting thing happening on earth. So yeah, I think everybody should, should follow. And like we said, we'll discuss this much more in depth in future episodes as well. Be sure to watch our other clips and shorts and the entire uncensored episode 13 of the Yojo show.